What's up, my Nova Kingdom? It's Nova King back again. And uh, it's been a hot minute since we've been back. I say that all the time, but it's true. I say it because it's true. Um, I kind of go, I, I myself, like the great and late uh, Kentaro Mira, tend to go on hiatuses. But uh, I'm back, and I'm back with one of the most, I'd say the only, really prevalent, popular thing on my channel, and that being Berserk content. And, uh, you know, it's been a long time, but I've just gotten back into reading a lot of the manga, and it's inspired me to come back and make more videos on it. And for this, and for the upcoming Berserk videos, I want to preface that I'm going to be exploring more specific moments from each arc, and kind of making uh, several videos on each arc. And in the process of doing that, trying to make those videos shorter, so I'm not making, you know, 40 minute, you know, long videos like the Lost Children's arc. Because I think that's not as appetizing for some people, not as not as easy to get down for some people, you know, sit and watch a 40 minute long video. It's hard not to rant and, you know, talk a lot when, they're, when you're talking about something as uh, dynamic and as, you know, just um, intricate as Berserk. But uh, I'm going to make more videos just kind of based on really key moments throughout each arc so I can, you know, we'll make more content out of it and uh, it'll be a little shorter, you know, videos for you guys. Um, and that's kind of where we're starting off today and I'm excited for it and if you like that kind of concept if you like seeing more Berserk content coming to this channel and if you want to see that come back more and more without hopefully any you know further delays uh, like and subscribe that's the best thing you can do like comment subscribe and that shows me that you guys want to see more and it shows that you support the channel so uh, I guess we can just get started off by uh, kind of going back where we had the Lost Children's Arc finish up, and after that, Guts is very wounded, very battered up, and he is essentially, in you know, without going into too much detail, captured by the Holy Sea members, you know, Farnese and them, uh, and they kind of capture him, thinking that he is, you know, part of the Eclipse, and well, he was, but they think he's the, sort of the cause, and the, uh, the fifth God Hand member kind of thing, like, they think that Guts is, uh, correlation to this whole thing is far more darker than it was you know that he had he had more of a part to play and uh so they bring him in on that and i mean don't even get me started on that arc man i mean that little like section where you know we are really introduced to far nice and you know it's a really cool sub arc for sure i like it it's really cool and uh you know it's it's definitely a good read but it's it's got some fucked up shit it ain't okay it ain't alright, and just thinking back on it, just don't sit well with the boy. I'm gonna tell you that. God, God, it didn't sit well. There, you know, it's there's some there's some dark moments in and of itself there that we could make a whole video about. But we're moving past it. I don't want to think about it. We're moving past it. Uh, so he escapes this. He escapes this after some time, only to receive a warning from this, you know, you know, demon abortion that Casca had, you know, this, this fucked up thing that's kind of been following Guts around and kind of haunting his dreams and haunting his subconscious, um, returns to him and actually shows, you know, gives a warning that Casca is in trouble. You know, it kind of hints that something is wrong. And so, seeing this, Guts drastically, you know, goes back to what is effectively his home. After two years, essentially, he goes back to the only real place he has anymore. And that's kind of what this video is about, is him coming back to what is effectively his home after such a long time and kind of the repercussions of that and what happened during this time. I, you know, I, like, I, like I said, I'm making videos about, po about moments that I think are really important. And I think this visit back to, you know, Rickert and all of them and Goto, I think there's so much, there's a lot of really important stuff that happens here in the time where Guts finally decides to return home. Uh, he goes back and is greeted by Rickert, uh, Erica, and uh, a very, very sickly Goto, but Casca is not there. Casca's not there, and Guts essentially lashes out at Rickert for this, um, but uh, Erica actually, you know, kind of chimes in saying that it's her fault, that she took Casca out because she was so tired of the cave she was stuck in, and she wandered off and got lost. But she then kind of lashes out more at Guts, saying that, you know, when, when Rickard at least went out to look for her, when Rickard made this effort to go try and find her, he always came back home. And that's, I think, is a very, very, I think that, that bit of dialogue is 
it's very for you know it's, I don't know I think that, that for such a small bit of dialogue from such a young kind of immature character it, it holds a lot of weight in saying that they you know at least Ricker was dependable and depend and dependable for that for them for Erica for Costco whereas Guts just kind of left and and, and she really she really fucking socked it to him with that one um, and so you know she kind of says this to him and uh, afterwards Guts actually goes and meets more uh, with Goto and uh, this is one of the best parts of this of this uh, little mini arc you could say and a big part of why I think it's so compelling this whole segment where Guts returns back and everything this kind of interaction with Goto where uh, he meets with him and he's you know you know he's in bed he's he's weak he's you know essentially kind of at the end of his life and uh, Goto kind of has this conversation and, and is really really upfront uh, with guts about warning him of how his uh, his vengeance is essentially going to consume him he doesn't understand everything specifically but he kind of he, he gets the general idea kind of like Puck does you know kind of like Rickard does you know, they, they, don't, they don't understand the true depravity of what happened in the Eclipse, but they know a general idea of what Guts is truly facing here. And that Ngoto thinks that him chasing something with such fervor, with such, you know, vengeance, with such vengeance in his heart is something that is going to, you know, destroy him eventually. He talks about how all he's really done is run away from what he was trying to protect all along, what was truly precious to him, the only precious thing that was left. You know, he ran from what was a tougher situation in his mind of taking care of Casca after she forgot who he was. Being faced with such a difficult, you know, kind of interaction, difficult decision, he opted out of that to instead lean back on what he knew better and what was easy for him, that being fighting. You know, f you know fighting for his life. That was what was, he knew best. And he decided to lean back on that and, and essentially run from his problems, run from Casca and in a way abandon her again uh and uh yeah and even and he said like just that concept alone of of running from what was important to just fight and fight and try and like you know hide himself from what was truly you know prevalent what was truly a problem what he truly needed to be there for he found an escape and that escape was fighting and that essentially will break him someday the vengeance in his heart, the constant fighting, it, it benefits nobody, not even himself. It is going to break him and take away one of the very few things, you know, that Casca has left, and he's robbing himself of being with her. And so this is kind of a big, you know, very, very, uh, very big moment. Like I said, I think, I think someone actually calling guts out on some of this stuff and and him having this very, very direct conversation with him saying these things, I think it's, you know, I think it's big. I think it's huge for Goto to do that. I think it's a huge moment between those two characters. And I think it shows that Goto really cares for Guts in a way. It really does, that he's trying to help him. You know, he's trying to pass on what he, uh, you know, pass on what is essentially his wisdom to this much younger, much more brash man in saying what he thinks he should do in because he's worried about him and he's worried about what will happen if he follows his path. So I think I think that whole interaction is uh, it's very, very interesting and very, very cool to watch play out. Um, after this, uh, Rickert and Erica take Guts to see the Field of Blades. And this is just a really cool memorial, basically, that Rickert has put together over the years of him taking on the blacksmithing craft and making these blades. And each time he'd make one, he'd plant one in memorial to one of their friends, one of their comrades, and uh, and he did this for years, you know, and, and it and it turn and it comes out to be this amazing kind of uh, honoring of their friends and of the people that are no longer there. And Guts almost feels like embarrassed of this because he's, you know, he's embarrassed to see how much better Rickard was able to cope, the things he was able to accomplish, and the way he was able to move on. In comparison to him so he's even kind of looking at Goto's words and looking at what you know he said to him and saying wow have I really spent these two these last two years doing all that I could to move on from this event you know I think putting it in perspective with what Rickard's done it was it was almost embarrassing for him to see that um, 
And so we have that little interaction. We see that when we see the field of swords, we have guts kind of have this moment of self-reflection. And after that, you know, uh, guts kind of, you know, they, they, they end up wrapping up the night, showing guts where he can stay for the night, where he can kind of relax in a way. You know, guts apologizes to uh, Rickert for kind of lashing out at him. And uh, and yeah, they kind of leave guts to his to his to his own little space. And he, you know, he tries to do his best to rest up and try and uh, take the time that he can because he is safe here. But he's so conditioned to such a chaotic life that he lives where every night is full of danger that he can't even relax without his sword being near him at night. It's just so driven into his brain. And it's to the point where he doesn't think he'll ever be able to sleep at night again. And that's, that, that whole kind of, it, 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 you know, it's that whole moment is very scary because you kind of see uh truly how much of a toll this has taken on guts more than just in a physical sense um so we have that and uh as he's as he's sitting down there as he's kind of just you know sitting pondering on things as he has nothing better to do he can't relax he kind of reflects on what goto said to him and how he kind of questioned guts decisions leading guts to question his own to really reflect on this and and question his decisions, wondering if hate was all that really remained inside of him. But after thinking back on, you know, the friends he made back in, you know, the days of the Band of the Hawk and the relationships he had, and, you know, he, he looks back on that and he realizes that there is more that burns in his heart than just, than just hate. What, there's, there's a different sort of flame that burns inside of him, and that's a love for someone he was too afraid to face back then too afraid to face when things were hard when things were tremendously hard when Costco was essentially no longer the person she was anymore but regardless of that you know in this cave in this moment by himself thinking back on the fact that there's more that lives in him than hate that there's love inside him still he decides that regardless of what happens regardless of how long it takes to get Costco to remember or what will become of them that he he can't and that he won't lose her ever again and this is just a very very triumphant moment for guts his character where he really sets aside hate and vengeance for a cause more pure in the sense of in the sense of saving somebody near and dear to his heart um and you know this is whole this is going on and and while this is kind of going on rickard and puck are kind of having a conversation while rickard's working on things and he kind of talks about how Guts really hasn't changed from the man he used to be. He was so worried that Guts not only wouldn't survive, but if he did, he would be a monster of a man. He would not be the same person he remembered him as. And uh, and he was relieved to see that when it comes down to it, to like the bare you know foundation of who Guts was and what matters to him, that hasn't changed in, in Rickard's eyes. And he thinks he thanks Puck, th saying that a lot of that is thanks to him being with Guts and kind of helping cling to that last bit of humanity he has left, keeping him the man he was. Um, so that's you know they they have that little interaction, which is again very cool, I think. And I think that that says a lot when Rickard ta has that conversation with Puck, saying that. When it comes down to it, Guts is still Guts. Um, and so they're talking, and uh, then Goto comes out, you know, his sick ass, dying ass, comes out. And, um, and you know, Rickard's all worried about him, but, you know, he, 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 you know, he still takes pride in his work. And he comes out to, you know, work on the Dragon Slayer for presumably one of the last times while kind of making these inferences saying that like a blade a person's good core uh can be brought out by the right flame and kind of saying you know that guts foundationally is still the, a good man and can still is still capable of those those uh those those good feelings and those good natures and that he simply needs the right conditions to be brought back to that foundation you know no matter how rusted his exterior has become, no matter how weathered it's become, he can still come return to the foundation where he started, which was as a better man. And uh, says this and uh, uh, tells Rickert to pass on uh, to, to pass on some words uh, from Godot saying that 
to don't turn out like me. Like tell him don't turn out like me. I think that's close to the close to what he says directly in the manga, and he's inferring to guts. Tell him not to turn out like me. And uh, so the next day, guts is ready to leave out with new equipment, uh, ready for any challenge to bring back Casca. Um, and with him talking with Rickert, they kind of use the warning that guts received as kind of a hint. Uh, trying to point them into the right direction to go of where to start looking for Casca and they eventually settle on uh, St. Albion Temple the Tower of Conviction this holy kind of this holy ground um, and that's kind of the only uh, place they have to start it's the only thing they have to work with and Guts is more than willing to take that and run with it and do what he has to to find and save Casca um, so you know, he kind of has his last words with Rickert. Um, he even has a, fi you know, kind of a farewell to Goto from who's, you know, up in his room, you know, sick in bed, saying that uh, that he better be, be okay and he better, you know, be alive when he comes back next because, you know, he he really, really respects Goto as a, as a smith and as a man and wants his craftsmanship to keep finding it, finding itself with guts. And with the Dragon Slayer, and he doesn't want to lose that, so he, he's like, you know, he holds him to it. He's like, you know, you're a good blacksmith, and I want you to keep working on my, on my gear. You're the guy for me, and uh, you better stay alive. You better be, you better stay alive when I'm back next. And so they kind of have this like res very respectful, respectful, respectable farewell as Guts kind of is holding Goto to this, to this, uh, to this promise that he better stay alive for when he comes back next. And uh, and Goto kind of watches him leave, and thinking about how Guts is always running towards something uh, one way while something else is crumbling in the other direction. Kind of saying, you know, kind of pointing out how Guts is leaving while he's essentially on his deathbed, and you know, but he takes solace in this, knowing, you know, knowing at least that you know he won't be all gloomy about his passing. And I think just he was mainly grateful to get to see guts at least one more time before you know god knows what happens and uh and uh just kind of finishes off with the thought of that living and dying really are something that is beyond us and beyond our control and what we're ready for um so with this guts rushes off to find and finally save his one true love throwing himself into the conviction arc this next big arc we have and uh, whatever penance is waiting for him there. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of our step away from the Lost Children's arc into the next really, really big arc in, in Berserk, the Conviction arc. And Guts rushing off to find and save Casca. But, I mean, I just, I love this kind of, there's not a lot drastic, I guess, that happens in the sense of, like, world scale of things, you know, happening, but... You know, this really sets up very, very well. Very well sets up um, the next big arc in Berserk, and I think it does a very good job of it. And I think it touches on some very, you know, intricate, more internal uh, conflicts with some of the characters, especially Guts. And uh, yeah, Guts returned home and was able to, uh, I think, understand and find himself a bit better and recover what was more. Um, indicative of his of his better foundation than just the vengeance he seeks now. This is kind of a really good turning point where he decides to fight in the name of something other than vengeance. And uh, yeah, it's super cool and it sets up the next arc very, very well. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the video. I just wanted to sit down and talk with you about that stuff. Uh, like I said, I really, really enjoy this little mini arc. I think it's one of the best parts of kind of the conviction arc even though it happens very very you know uh, very very in the beginning of it there's definitely some good stuff going on in the conviction arc other than that i have like several other videos where i want to talk about other events throughout the conviction arc leading up to the end of it but uh this is this is one of the coolest moments this is one of the coolest little moments i feel like and i really really enjoyed it uh and i hope you did too i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you enjoyed me talking about it so uh uh, thanks so much guys for watching if you made it to this point. I really do appreciate it I really do appreciate all the love and uh, Interaction these berserk videos get I really am passionate about this stuff and about this manga and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that it brings you guys some level of enjoyment 
if you uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more content like this, remember you gotta subscribe, become part of the Nova Kingdom, comment and like. Let me know what you want to see next, and uh, yeah, just uh, also I might have a subscriber milestone kind of thing in the works where I'm reaching for 150 subscribers next. And I've thought of some cool, something cool that I could do in the name of Berserk for said uh, milestone. So let me know what you think of that. Subscribe so we can talk more about it. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, it's Nova King from the Nova Kingdom. Remember to uh, stay positive, enjoy life, because you only get one shot at it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.